What's up, fellow reefers? As you know, reefing ain't easy. Another phrase you're gonna hear is, nothing good in this hobby happens quickly. And that's almost true, except for ChemiClean. That stuff works in like 48 hours. It's amazing. Now this is gonna be to treat cyanobacteria. If you wanna know more about that, I'll put a little card here and you can check out my other video that really explains a bunch of different ways to treat it, what it is, gets into the ins and outs, but this is a quick video today to specifically go over how to use ChemiClean and what to expect. So we're about to jump into that, but I wanted to say possibly the best thing about ChemiClean is it helps you identify, do I have a cyanobacteria problem? Now, most cyanobacteria is gonna be that like red, I don't know, stringy stuff, but a lot of saltwater aquarius might not realize you can get green cyanobacteria. It's not just freshwater. And sometimes it looks almost like dinoflagellants. It's like kind of brownish. You've got bubbles going on. Don't quote me on this. I might be wrong, but I believe that it creates methane gas. So you get these bubbles and this other stuff. Point is though, you might be wondering, is this cyanobacteria? I would recommend go ahead, treat it with ChemiClean. See if it is or not. Worst case scenario, it isn't. And as far as I know, it's safe. I've used it a few times. I've done a bunch of research on it. Seems to be pretty safe to me. If it has had an adverse effect on someone's tank, I would just double check. It wasn't something they did. Like they'll often say, increase your flow so you have a lot of oxygen, a lot of turbulence up there. Maybe you directed a power head right at a coral and that is what caused a negative effect. Not necessarily the ChemiClean. But like I said, as far as I know, it's safe stuff. But let's just jump into exactly how to use it and what to expect. This is what cyanobacteria looks like. You can see next to that Acropora, there's that red stuff. You can see the red stuff here. There's a lot of it right here. Now that is your typical cyanobacteria you're gonna see. I have a bare bottom tank Normally it forms in the sand first. Low flow areas is where you're gonna see it the most. Now it can also be green. Let me show you what green cyanobacteria looks like. That right there is green cyanobacteria. I have another spot in the tank that has it. Just right here. Good amount of green cyanobacteria. All right guys, they have instructions for a reason. I would suggest you follow them to a T if you want to be 100% safe. So I'm going to briefly go over them, explain what they are, and then you'll see exactly how I did it and how I interpreted them. So you need to have air going into your aquarium. Aeration. So you can use a skimmer, you can use an air stone, any way to get extra air. Ideally, you want to have more air exchange than you would normally have. So you can turn your skimmer power and air intake up. You can add an air stone, or you can try to put your power heads towards the surface to create more ripples and get more air exchange. The whole point is you want to have more than what your standard is, what you normally have. Turn off sterilizer, ozone, carbon, and chemipure if you're using it to as a filtration. You'll notice they say to continue to use your skimmer. I believe they put this here because they want to make sure you don't reduce the amount of air exchange you normally have and skimmers usually make up the most of that where as soon as you put the chemi clean in your tank your skimmer will start overflowing and going nuts so what i did and what's very popular is take off the head so you're not actually collecting anything or if you really want to follow the instructions they're saying dial it way back because it is going to go nuts and it's going to make it overflow but i would just let it overflow to help increase that air exchange You'll also notice it says maintain normal water flow. Basically saying don't adjust your pumps and your power heads. Now I think because of what I said earlier is why they tell you not to do that because you might accidentally disrupt something and have a coral not like it because you adjusted your flow and then you would blame the chemi clean. So if you want to do this to increase air exchange, just be aware of that and don't blame ChemiClean if something goes wrong. I believe that's why they put this in the instructions for a liability standpoint and help you avoid an adverse side effect. 10 gallons, one scoop. So if you have 100 gallons, 10 scoops. You pour it into a cup, you dissolve it, then you take that dissolved stuff, pour it into your aquarium. You should have success after 48 hours. Once that 48 hours is up, make sure you do a full 20% water change. And after you've done that, 
return your UV, your ozone, replace the carbon if you remove that in step three. So I've turned my UV sterilizer off. I closed my gate valve that was processing water through the carbon there. I am gonna keep my protein skimmer going, but I am actually going to allow it to overflow like it is now, so it has plenty of aeration. And I added this little cheap uh, tool here, which has got air stones on the end, it just pumps air. Just gonna run it like this for two days, and then do a 20% water change. The way I'm doing it is, uh, Take this little scoop guy, put some in there, scraping it off, or five. completely dissolved. I'm gonna rinse off my stirring stick to make sure it all gets in there. I'm actually gonna put half up top and half down into the sump. There's no right or wrong way. If you are gonna put it into your tank, I'm gonna pour it into this power head so that it gets dispersed. I'm gonna pour the rest into my sump. Give it a quick rinse and call it good. It's that easy. You can see I poured it into the chamber with my protein skimmer and it immediately made the foam extremely thick to where you can see there's about an inch of foam now in there where that was extraordinarily fast. I put it in there and you could hear it too. Right, so with ChemiClean, Give it at least 24 hours before you start to freak out and think it's not working. I mean, it does take a full 48 hours to completely work, but after about 14 hours, I at least didn't really notice much change. It's been about 22 hours and it's definitely made a huge change. So there was cyanobacteria right next to this Pink Floyd, right to the right of it. You can see it's still there. It's just completely white now and has been disappearing, which is awesome. If I can get a good shot of it, the best shot is over here. The far rock. If it'll focus, come on, don't focus on that. There we go. That is where the bulk of my cyanobacteria was. You can see it's kind of a lightish pink right now. Um, it was, you know, deep maroon red. It's turning white. It's in transition right now. There was cyanobacteria right here below that cherry bomb, between the milli and the cherry bomb and it's completely gone. That was the green cyanobacteria. There was the heaviest patch of green cyanobacteria was right here. And I can still see it's a little bit green, but for the most part, it's gone. It has made a huge difference. If you remember from the video before, there was a large patch of cyanobacteria there. So it's good. If you actually, I don't know, let's see if the camera picks it up. There is a lot of air bubbles in the tank, mini bubbles, which I know isn't the best for the livestock. I'm sure it's irritating, but a couple days of this isn't really gonna hurt. My media is all purple and worn out in the uh, CO2 scrubber, but my pH is 8.3 because of all the extra aeration. So, and my ORP is definitely, if that'll focus, dip down. Um, but that's okay, it's still at safe levels and fine. So, like I have mentioned before, I mean, in my opinion, it's safe, it works wonders, and obviously you need to figure out why it's happening and fix that. Don't just rely on doing Kemi Clean every, you know, three to six months, but it is a good way to get a head start and get this to disappear. All right, guys, so I hope that helped you understand how to use Kemi Clean and what to expect. Because as you know, reefing ain't easy. If you like the video, let me know by giving me a thumbs up. If you got some questions, put them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. And if you like the content, be sure to subscribe. Appreciate you watching. See you next time.